Hello, welcome to this video and today I'm going to talk about the Railgun app. Railgun is a collection of smart contracts that verify zero knowledge proofs, allowing users to make, send or receive transactions without revealing any assets, amounts or identities. Uh, so this is their logo and I guess privacy and an anonymity is their uh, tagline. This is a quote from their white paper. The goal of Railgun is not to strip away the third party verifiability of actions taken on chain, but rather to give back to users the power to choose who sees what, when and why. It's all about privacy. Um, so Railgun facilitates private transactions basically between wallets. Um, what's important to note is that there's no side chains or nodes needed to run Railgun. It's all through Ethereum mainnet. Um, which ensures its decentralization and um, security and then the railgun app is like building privacy on top of that with your wallet um, before we go any further this is not financial advice i am not a financial advisor so um, you're coming to the wrong place if you want that i am however trying to learn and get to know this app and its is power what it does and um, trying to educate people as well so you might see me make mistakes maybe um, you can help me as well hopefully I can help you and we have a great time together so yeah important to do your own uh, research look at the uh, Railgun website the white paper you could join their telegram group to check them on Twitter all of these things so I made this little piece here originally um, to just kind of get around my head what was happening with uh, Railgun and, and, and some why we need it. So you can see up here I've got a bank with KYC, know your customer. So when setting up an account at a centralized exchange such as crypto.com or Binance, you have to give a lot of your personal details um, to them for example your name your address your bank account details as well as your crypto addresses um, are known by these centralized exchanges when you go to withdraw from your centralized exchange to a, an address um, they're going to presume that is your address and so if they were able to see the activity on the address they can see what you've been doing on chain so I think the problem with this is imagine there's a situation where the government demands your exchange was to hand over all your details associated with you. Maybe a government wants to censor an address or they just want to censor you. We've already seen governments retroactively ban people's bank accounts for donating to certain causes and now developers are being arrested for creating apps um, that are able to anonymous, anonymously send funds to other people so uh, it's important that we can keep our privacy i think we have a right i think the people that make these laws um, want privacy for them um, we should fight to keep that as well so um, this is the problem with the kyc and just creating an account and sending all your funds to um, this account this green um, ox wallet oh, zero x I like to call it Ox, the Ox wallet. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, as you can see here, you, the um, you got your identification is given for this green wallet. You're known who this is. Whoever you are, this is it. And if anyone over here with a spying glass was to look through and you know your address, it could be government, it could be... Um, people that want to hack you it could be it could be anyone even family and friends that want to see what you've got um they could look through your account and they'd be able to see all your transactions so um that's not ideal so what then you could do then is basically is to send your tokens from this known address is to send it privately to another wallet so the funds would leave your account and they wouldn't be able to see where the destination was that's quite powerful because then um, technically you, you just transferred your funds to another wallet however you're not able to um, give away the details of what wallets you're associated with so 
maybe we could move towards more of a one KYC wallet and then like this red one represents the like Anon wallet over here. Um, and this was the, the first thing I wrote down. I guess this shows kind of the KYC element, maybe the problem with that, and then how they're going to interact in the middle to, um, to send privately, to then come back out on the other side over here to, um, you know, be, be able to take part in um, um, DeFi applications and stuff like that. But when you get your funds over on, onto this right side here with the red wallet, you don't know where those funds have come from. Or other people don't know where those funds have come from. But that's the important thing. So this red wallet be, remains anonymous. So the way I am intend to maybe use this is just to use this green wallet as a way just to pass through funds onto my main wallet that I, I know is more secure. So it's not going to hold many funds. Um this green wallet is going to be used to pass through to a wallet that I actually want to use. Cool, so we got that. So let's now start talking um, about the Railgun app. Okay, so I should be able to go to Bray. So this is the website, this is the app. I have set it up um, here. I've got two wallets added the red and green wallet. I have been messing around with it. I would have liked to have done it a fresh one for the first time with you, but um, it didn't work out that way. However, please verify this, and the best way to understand is to do it yourself. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it on Polygon. Maybe when you load it up for the first time, be on Ethereum. The problem with Ethereum is it costs a lot of money to interact with the chain. So I'm going to be on Polygon because it's a lot cheaper. So that means I have to get funds onto Polygon from my from this example i'd have to get funds onto onto polygon oh, come on onto a polygon network here or binance smart chain and then we can start playing around with it here i use crypto.com that you can export um or withdraw to the um, polygon blockchain Anyway, okay, let's get down to it. So we're here. This is our public wallet wallet. I added a seed phrase and it made me create a password and it gave me a private address as well, starting with I wonder if I wrote it zero ZK one. Here we go, zero ZK one address. So that's a private secret address. So um this is what I'm this is what I have. This is the public side here. You can see it's public and this is the name of the wallet. You can see the funds I have, just a bit of Matic here. So what do we do? We've got a couple of options, send, receive and shield. Let's go back to our, what, I, what I made earlier. So if you were to send, when it's public over here, as you can see, um, our KYC wallet, our known wallet, will send funds publicly to the red wallet, which means... It can be seen by anyone um, and now your new red wallet is associated with the green wallet. We don't want that to happen. So that's what happens when you send and receive. Now, if I was to click shield, um, please enter a private railgun address, select tokens and enter the amount to shield. So this is the my own private address here associated with this green wallet so this is private here then from here you can add the tokens and send them privately how i've represented that here is so if i'm on the public here and i click shield so from my kyc account i can send the funds to either the same green wallet but just the the the, the private address or i could send it to another wallet and uh, again the private address there so if you were to look on uh, like a block explorer, explorer, you'd see the tokens leave the wallet, but you don't know where they went to. Interesting. So let's just check, I've mentioned it. tokens publicly leave the wallet and able to see which wallet received tokens. Tokens are received on the um, 0ZK1 address attached to the um, 0X address. So you're going to receive things um, privately and that, that address is attached to your 
your public address and they the rail rail gun give you that private address when you when you when you sign up or when you connect your wallet and so the receiver is anonymous oh, i got a use case send your own tokens yourself privately looks like the token left the wallet and able to use the token in DeFi. use case you could hide tokens on your own wallet or you could font fund another wallet anonymously so let's say um, i didn't want to transfer it to anyone i could just hide my dollars or my matic from site and just like through here it'd be just sending it to the to the um the private address so the same here with uh well yeah that's a shield bit so the next step would be to on when it's when we change it to private to send and receive between wallets so let's say i'm on the green wallet now and i change it to private so these are assets that you can't see if you were to type in this you wouldn't be able to find this address but if you were to find this address that's is the public address you would only be able to see these assets here you wouldn't be able to see any of these so these are all secret so when we're on this page we can send receive and then shield so let's let's just check this uh from here yeah you're just sending from one account to the other so i could send it i enter any private address um so that could be another one of your wallets or or whatever and then you could change the 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 token amount you want to send privately and so then this will send from one from one private address then i could change to uh, another private address here um, and the you would be anonymous you won't be able to see it happen on on a uh, block explorer um not, not on ether scan anyway you won't be able to see where it went okay i think i think we got got most of it here so then you can also unshield it so if i'm on the private now i could unshield my assets and so it would bring it it would like transfer it back from the private address back to the public address i hope that makes sense so if i on this one here so it'd be like it's held on the private here um, with the shield and then you can then unshield it and then it becomes public and then all it knows is that um, some tokens got sent into your account, but it doesn't know where from. Cool. So I think I've covered covered everything. Um, yeah, so this is full private mode here. Okay, cool. So that's basically it. I would really recommend you go onto the Railgun app and just see how it works. Moving funds from one account to another. Checking up on... Um, a block explorer or even like dbank um, to to check the account and to see what it what uh, like the history the transaction history and what that looks like to someone trying to look into your account to see what's going on in there so a few issues i ran through and um, things i just want to mention about uh, my experience and what might help you um, so the use of Polygon or Binance Smart Chain to test out the functionality. This makes it a lot cheaper for s smaller portfolios and beginners who are prone to make mistakes. Um, yeah, it makes it a lot cheaper. So I would recommend Polygon personally. That was the first like side chain L1, L2 that I decided to um, go to. I uh, it's not about maybe it's not about trust but polygon is the one i'd recommend however binance smart chain is also fine a new account does not use a, uh does not need to use a faucet to get start, started so wmatic and any other asset that is sent privately to a new wallet can be used as fees to unshield so i f was um concerned at the start that i'd have to somehow get funds sent publicly to this wallet um which would kind of defeat the point i thought i was missing something but what happens is is if a brand new wallet let's say this red wallet re receives something uh privately in here let's pretend i had something privately um and i had ratmatic 
and I wanted to unshield, you would, you could change the fee. So I don't need Matic in my public account to be able to unshield. I could go from a, a an empty account, receive some funds privately, and then those private funds would be able to then um, be used as fees to then move it to a public address. Once you do it, you understand more, but it helped me out um, a lot because usually one of the things you have to worry about is getting the gas token onto a new wallet and this allows us to still um, do that anonymously. Cool. So each seed phrase contains many different 0x addresses. So each 12 words that you might put into MetaMask or whatever one that you use, you'll see that it's not just one address that comes up, it's like loads and loads. Rail, the Railway app only creates a private 0zk1 address for the first address from the seed phrase, as far as I know from what I have found in my experience. So what this means is that when I put in my seed phrase, rail will just automatically look at the first address on that list which is probably usually the one that you, you use um, and then it will create a private address for the first zero x address on that list so um, this means that you can't have like one seed phrase and then lots of different accounts with different um, private addresses you have to have one set of seed phrases for each private address that you generate so this just means maybe more um, looking after seed phrases and knowing what wallets you're using and what you're sending to 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 who that's one thing to think about so yeah um i use a ledger to secure my um my wallet I think that's been really important and that'd be the first upgrade I would say to most people to do um because of the way I set up my wallet with my ledger I wasn't really aware of my seed phrase um so to today um whatever I I learned it you don't actually need like your seed phrase to to install you can just import it with ledger so you never have to type your seed phrase anywhere which is a good thing but however if you want to find your seed phrase, you need to, um, and, and you have a ledger, or even if you you've, um, think you've lost it or whatever, if you go to settings, security and privacy, you reveal the secret recovery phrase, you enter the password, and you use that recovery phrase to import your account into Railway. So that recovery phrase in, in MetaMask is your seed phrase, those 12 words. So it's really important that you um, look after that, you keep it stored offline. And um, yeah, so, because originally when I had my ledger, I, I didn't think I'd be able to use that on the Railway app because I, um, I didn't have my 12 words, but once doing this, I then realized I had 12 words I could use to put into the railway and then I was um, I could bring it up there and attach it I think maybe not all of us would run into this problem but it was something I did and after spending a bit of time on it I was able to figure it out I think um, this video has been long enough I believe um, I have tried to explain it the best I could um, this these videos also help me in kind of understanding it and like like this is how I kind of visualize it in my head and making this is, is fun so if you have any questions please ask or you could go um, check out the social links for rail um, there is a token and I haven't even got into the token at all because um, I'm not trying to get you to spend your money or to pump bags I don't even own rail at the moment I'm trying to look at the use case and see if this is something viable for the future. Um, please be careful out there. Don't get wrecked. Uh, 2022 is the year to survive the bear market. So whatever you do, keep hold uh, of your funds safe. That's why I recommend a ledger. Take it easy. And thank you for watching this video oh so much.